Well, given everything that's been going on with the tragic killing of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter protests, we're wanting to think about this and work this through as a church family. And so it's great to be joined um, on a, a Zoom call by Ian Sutherland, who's our warden. And Ian and I are just going to chat through some of the things about how he's been reflecting on this and how he's been working this through um, with his family and what that means for us as a church family as well. So Ian, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, let's start. You, you grew up in Bristol, but you moved to London a bit later on in life. Um, can you share a little bit about what your experiences have been of racism or discrimination in maybe those different contexts? Um, yeah, yeah, grew up in Bristol as a youth um, in the 70s, say 80s. Well, from what I can remember, there was a lot of social problems uh, between the wealthy and the poor, and a big disparity, just sort of big disparity, black and white. Um, you know, working class and stuff, you know, they, you were sort of aware of things weren't right. Um, I think, uh, you know, I just remember, right, you know, riots, there's high unemployment. Um, yeah, there's just lots of, lots of, lots of things going on, a lot of social problems. And I think race came into it in the context when uh, you think about school, my school, you know, it was apparent, yeah, when you were at school, that, you know, I didn't get a full grasp of it in primary school, but I always remember some youngsters were um, sent to a, uh, a class, a special class, because obviously they used to use their mother tongue or their native language, so they, they'd be put into a, a sort of special class to, to learn English. I think some of them did actually speak English, but I think because they were so comfortable using their mother tongue that they, teachers probably thought they needed to put them in a special, special group for extra, extra tuition. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but I think more, more viv than when I got to secondary school and um, you know, problems you were aware um, things used to happen in the sense of uh, I can remember one incident at school um, we were you know going to the toilet as you do um, and there were people in the toilet and um, someone was smoking in the toilet and um, yeah a teacher came in and um, he came in all guns blazing obviously smoke you know someone smoking in the toilet so obviously thinking what's going you know he just took the whole lot of us, um, all the black kids, and all the white kids just walked off and he said, you guys are going to the headmaster's office. And it was like, you pleaded with him saying, look, you know, we don't know anything, we have nothing to do with this. We don't, I, I, I didn't even smoke. And that was what mm -hmm. was, was so, he just saw that we were a group of pupils and that we were black and he thought we must be connected. Yeah. And, and we ended up being suspended from school. Um, it, was, it, was, it was ridiculous and it sort of left a, a long lasting imprint, you know, um, I'm not saying all teachers were like that, but that was just a wider issue, what was going on in the school. I mean, the teachers were in conflict with each other about things themselves. So, um, and I think that spilled out into sometimes how pupils were dealt with. Um, and I think also, I think later on, um, as, a, as, a, as a young man going out into the city on the weekends, you know, police, we'd go out and be stopped by the police on numerous occasions. Uh, you know, uh, stop and search as well was 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 another thing which was around. Uh, you, you'd probably get stopped for all manner of things and and basically quizzed about where you were going. And um, you know, if um, you'd um, been involved in any sort of criminal activity, um, so yeah, that sort of interrogation by the police as well uh, was um, a thing you were used to when you were growing up. Not so much now. I mean, on the other hand, London, um, things were different. I think things were different in London. I mean, obviously, um, it's a different time has moved on. Um, but yeah, I think in the workplace, I think we had some issues in the workplace. I think um, there sometimes people want to progress their careers and, um, you know, they would be favoured for certain roles. And sometimes when you want, uh, you know, their colleagues want to further their careers, I think we'd... Um, had difficulties in the sense of trying to move up the ladder um, just because, I don't know, sometimes the, the feedback was that I didn't like his accent or his attitude and I don't think it was, I just thought that maybe their background and their um, educational background didn't fit. It seemed like um, some people who would all um, gone to a certain type of university and and uh, uh, just, you know, ticked the right boxes were, were ticked over than someone who probably was as competent to do the job. Mm. Um, I think on it, I think the more subtle, I think um, as well, sometimes when I'm in London as well, people used to 
asked me a lot of questions about uh, where I'm from, um, what neighbourhood I'm from. Um, yeah, I remember someone in church asked me, even you know, is it dangerous south of the river? Um, and it seemed as if people put you in a category. Mm. Um, but you know, you know, you know, do you frequent this place in Brixton or whatever? Um, one of the examples was, was, you know, there was a colleague at work, no disrespect to anyone who has friends or family in Grenfell, but they asked me what was going on in Grenfell. I had to explain to them, I only know what I know from the news because I'm I'm not from Grenfell. I couldn't, I couldn't really um, say, but I think they were making reference to that. Well, there's a lot of Caribbean or people from that area, not in here or whatever. You know, you might know you you know. So so stuff like that really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 um the way life is sort of is. I think people presume stuff about you sometimes are not always correct, and that's what I'd say. Ian, thank you very much for being honest and sharing some of your experiences. Um, look, as you've been trying to work this through, I suppose on the, on the back of the Black Lives Matter protests, and I know you've been talking to your children about it and responding as a family. What are some of the ways you've been trying to kind of work that through? Um, we just had a lot of there's a lot of conversations um, going on. Um, obviously, I didn't I didn't actually follow the news too much when I heard about it. I didn't sort of I know people have been sending me images and stuff, but I tried to distance myself from that. But I think it's been a, a bit of a trigger. I think um, for the family, uh, a lot of emotions in the sense of what's happened. You, know, you sort of make comparisons to past generations, um, my parents. Your grandparents, you know, they used to always talk about the civil rights movement, you know, Martin Luther King and uh, Malcolm X and um, Marcus Garvey. You know, it just seems like all these similar things are, are, are resurfacing again. Um, so, um, I mean, some things in America are like in the UK. I mean, um, the UK and the US have, have, do have similar problems. I mean, we have had murders. We've had the Mark Duggan incident. I mean, previously, someone called Smiley Culture, a musician. You know, both, both murdered police involved, um, you know, protests, um, you know, I mean, we didn't come down to violence, but yeah. it's not always a, the, the solution. Um, uh, the, the, the Bristol incident, close to my heart, because there's been a long going dispute with Edward Cole. It's been, it's, you know, everyone knows um, there's been incidents and, um, with the school and what have you. Um, I mean, a lot. Um, people, uh, I've probably got family members who've been to Colston School. I mean, it is a privileged school. It is a nice school. Um, but, you know, there have been, inc- I find it was a bit blown over because there was a lot of incidents in the city. I mean, there's a famous graffiti artist, I'm not going to re- say his name, but he has for years decorated the city with all types of political statements. Mm. Uh, you know, he's known around the globe. Um, so it was just, I felt that it was, I think things were getting blown out of proportion. Um, you know, a lot of people um, started, <laughs> um, you know, not friends on Facebook anymore because a lot of uh, a lot of comments have been passed by people. But um, uh, you know, I've seen those same people protest about um, uh, things and and and, and, and you know, do um, similar things of, of public or disorder. Uh, so so yeah, it was. I think we for us, it's just been the big us talking and just reminding our children about you know historically these things have happened and yeah. you know don't give in to um hate as well because i think the easiest way is to is to want to hate um and that's just to divide us yeah. and we don't we're a mixed family so why would we want to not why would we say i mean black lives do matter but in our house everyone has to matter you know white or black so um we don't we don't want that to divide us so it's more of a um, keep us perspective on things uh, and, uh, and deal with it in, a, in that manner. That's very helpful. Yeah, and that message to you know be honest about it and talk about it, um, but also to not let it divide you as a family. I wonder, you know, what you think for us as a church family we can be doing to respond to this. Um, first and foremost, I think we just need prayer. I think praying um, and to check ourselves as well because sometimes our or we view the world, our way of thinking um, can be wrong as well. Yeah. Um, we can get carried away with our thoughts um, and feelings. Um, you know, especially if you're seeing images each day, we're being bombarded with um, stuff each day. We don't really get the full picture. 
Um, God made the world, he made it diverse, he made each of us, each and every one of us in his image. So we cannot really um, forget that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, someone quoted from um, Psalm uh, 89 verse 14 saying, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. Which talks about justice and righteousness, highlighting highlight the need for both justice and righteousness because we're hearing a lot about justice, but you know, are we seeking God's righteousness? You know, are we looking to him um, on, on, on what, what he's done? Are we coming to him and trying to know, get his wisdom? It's the times in our hearts and this matter to speak if we to speak out to speak out um but um not to you know take too many drastic actions in the sense what will cause exasperate the problem and create hatred amongst the, and divide us mm. uh, on a on a practical level though we i think we can um look up what we can do with our behaviors our activities obviously we can we can be calling stuff out with people with you know obviously um friends in the workplace or wherever we are um, in our communities, um, but also I think sometimes on this matter, just giving um, people opportunity to speak. I mean, not everyone wants to speak out about this, mm. uh, but some will want to speak out a bit and just give them that safe space, that room to speak, um, give people to talk about what they want to. Don't you know? Don't necessarily. There's no um, right or wrong way to go about this. Uh, we're all living and all having an experience, and that's what we bring to the table sometimes. Our own experience, and that's what we could be sharing to educate people on this topic sharing experience um from from what has happened from good and bad what we learn yeah. from it our cultural heritage and what it means we i think we just can't run away from history if we don't we're never going to learn from our experiences if we, we can't i mean i know removing plaques and whatever but that's part of history i think we have to deal with it um and sometimes there can be a lot of good out of it um yeah. and bring us all to together as one basically Mm. Um, other other ways I think people can do just um, do stuff like they can um, you know maybe spend in time with someone different than themselves um, spend um, time to, from a different background or learn a bit more about someone you wouldn't normally um, and there there it may you know break down those barriers or those misconceptions or those fears you you must have because sometimes I think a lot of these things sometimes people have fears of what they what they don't understand sometimes when they get to understand things that fear will, will dissipate because we all we all have the same needs really we all have got a desire to be loved and respected and valued yeah um, god values us so i think we should um do the same ian thank you thank you very much and thanks for giving up time and speaking about this in the midst of what i'm sure is a, a busy week but also thanks for speaking honestly and so helpfully as well and um well, for the church family, I'd like to encourage people to look at the statement that we've got on the homepage about Black Lives Matter and the church can and should do more. We also have a blog up um, all of last week looking at how we can self-reflect on this and think about this and be aware of some of the blind spots um, that we have. And another blog will go up on Monday as well, um, which will be looking to explore this and take on the conversation. So thanks, Ian, very much for your time. Let me lead us in a prayer before we go back to the service. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the diverse church family, that we do have different experiences, people from different backgrounds, ethnicities, uh, Lord God, and we want to be those who in Christ, because we are united, do live out the wonderful unity that we have. And so, Lord God, please, would you use this cultural moment, Lord, to expose blind spots, to cause us to change where we need to? Might we be committed to the journey of being united and diverse, inspiring London with the good news of Jesus Christ? Grant us wisdom, grace for forgiveness where needed, quick to say sorry when we make mistakes, Lord, and lead us in this, that we might walk together as a church family, and we ask it for your namesake. Amen. Amen.